Guardians of the Galaxy has some pretty weird and out there stuff in it. Like a talking raccoon, a sentient tree creature, a blue cyborg lady, and whatever that is. But Guardians Volume 2 is set to feature probably one of the most out there things introduced to the MCU to date. Star-Lord's father. And who the hell are you? I'm your dad, Peter. Now, from that trailer, you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Peter Quill's dad is just some dude that looks like Kurt Russell. But that is just the human form of Ego the Living Planet. Yep, that's right, an entire planet that's a living, breathing, sentient creature. So how does that work? That's what I'm gonna try and figure out. Firstly, let's remind ourselves of the definition of a planet, something that's changed over the years with some controversy. Pluto, definitely not a planet, for instance. It's the International Astronomical Union who have the final say on this, and they have decreed a planet to be any astronomical body that orbits a star or stellar remnant, is massive enough to have become rounded by its own gravity, but not massive enough to cause thermonuclear fusion. And it's cleared its neighbouring region of planetesimals. Many planets form at the same time as their star, when a collection of gas, dust and other matter spread throughout space starts to clump together under their own gravity. The formation of entire planetary systems is quite complicated though, and planets' orbits can dramatically change as they're forming, even getting ejected from their star's gravitational influence. And you thought getting kicked out of the football team was bad. Now, we know some of the ingredients for life do exist out in space. Complex organic molecules have been discovered in cosmic dust, including compounds similar to coal or petroleum, a level of complexity previously thought to only arise from life. We've also detected a type of sugar molecule required to form RNA, that's DNA's counterpart, within at least one distant star. And don't forget amino acids, the molecules that make up proteins, have been discovered frozen in the ice of comets. So the potential for life is out there, but could it go on to make a planet-sized life form? I can think of three possible scenarios. One, as the planet formed, the organic material from space developed into a single life form. We'll call this the single organism hypothesis. Two, the living planet is actually made of lots of much smaller creatures who act like one giant planet-sized being. We'll call this the superorganism hypothesis. And three, the planet hosts many organisms that interact with their inorganic surroundings, forming a synergistic, self-regulating complex system that helps maintain and perpetuate the conditions for life on the planet. The Gaia hypothesis. So, which do you think it is? Pause the video if you want to have a think, and when you're ready, you can delve a bit further into your choice. You can click here if you think ego is a single organism, here if you prefer a super organism, or here if you subscribe to the Gaia Hypothesis. And all the links can be found in the description as well.